to welcome you to the 2016 Best Practices Showcase, celebrating technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Lori Maline, and I am the Director of International Affairs here at Ramirez Candel at State, and I'll be the host for this session. So I'm in charge of introducing our speaker for this breakout session, and this session will be recorded. The presenter will let you know um, whether you will be able to address your questions at any time during the presentation or after the presentation is finished. We will have 55 minutes for this presentation. The presentation will be delivered in English and simultaneous translation is available on the headphones on channel four, canal cuatro. Additional headphones are available downstairs in the rotunda where you checked in if you would like them at any point during the conference. We appreciate that you change, switch over your tel telephone to vibrate or silence if possible um, in order to give your full attention to this session. I have distributed the evaluation form to everyone, but if you don't have a copy for any reason, you can grab a copy here and I will collect those at the end of the session. So please do fill them out and turn them in to me before you leave. Now, we are ready to start. The presenter for this session is Victor Rodriguez from, let me make sure I get it right, from Community College. And this session's title is Utilizing the Learning and Study Skills Inventory to Improve Learning Outcomes at an Urban Community College. His biography information was included in the conference's app and on the website. And I ask you to please help me welcome Victor Rodriguez for this presentation. Welcome all. Uh, those of you who come from New York uh, uh, already know how cold it is over there. And I was trying to get the, the room temperature raised a little bit because it's starting to feel like New York in here. And we've traveled so far, uh, I don't want anybody to get sick. Uh, uh, I have uh, about 23, 25 years of experience uh, working uh, in counseling and teaching freshman orientation courses. Um, I worked at City College, CCMY. I'm a graduate of CCMY. I am a former uh, SEEK student. Uh, and I uh, spent the last 23 years teaching at Bronx Community College. Um, and so um, my interest, there's always been uh, in, in teaching and in pedagogy and in reaching students um, because they remind me of, of of myself and they remind me of my parents and the struggles that students encounter when they're trying to transition from their native country or island to the Americas. And I have a, a strong uh, uh, sense of, of, of duty when it comes to making sure that they are successful. Um, and so, what I wanted to, I was reading on the way to the here, was an article that was published by a colleague of mine. Now, you know, I have 23 years, but when I started, I was the freshman at Bronx Community College. I was the baby. Everybody had retired. And so I was reading a paper of, of Dr. Warren Barron, who was one of the counselors who ran the freshman initiative program, which was very successful at Bronx Community College. And he wrote in 1991, he subsequently passed away, by the way, of uh, pancreatic cancer about uh, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and I always felt for him because he, he came to the college sick, you know, and, and I, but I knew immediately there was something wrong with him. But his dedication and his passion for working with students, you know, made him even come in then looking as sick as he was, as pale as he was. Anyway, he wrote in 1991 in this article, these are very difficult times for higher education. The nation's pool of traditional college-age students has declined during the decade of the 90s, thus forcing colleges and universities to compete more vigorously than ever for potential students. In addition, lawmakers in many states, including New York, are struggling to cut budgets and are also taking a hard look at why public institutions of higher learning are losing so many students. 
This was back in 1991. It could have been, you know, today. Um, and so, you know, things are changing. And so those of us who work in, with students, particularly in counseling, we see the cutbacks and the shortages. We started, when I started, there were, you know, 20 counselors. Today, there are four full-time counselors. And so enrollment keeps going up. You know, we have an enrollment management team. Um, we don't have a retention management team, but we have an enrollment management team. And so I feel that, you know, given the, the, the nature of the expectations now that they spoke of earlier this morning about retention, um, I, I feel that we need to, the game has changed. Success, uh, the measure for success has shifted. And so it's about retention, it's about assessment, it's about learning outcomes. And so what I've, what I've done is um, I've, I've taken a course uh, on assessment at, at Bronx Community College, BCC, with Dr. Richard Lamana. And I began to, uh, uh, early on, to take an interest in technology. So I thought technology was a, a very important tool. Students are everywhere, you know, wherever you see them, they're connected, they're knocked into technology, sometimes you know, for the good, sometimes not so good because, you know, I think that their social skills suffer because too much technology um, uh, is, uh, is predominant in their lives. Um, and so I, I created a, a, power, a, a Blackboard uh, site a long time ago, so I had to add to it. So what I wanted to start with was kind of like just show you through my Blackboard site what the students will see. And then of course you have, you know, uh, oh, by the way, let me just say that the course, I did two courses, two different types of courses. There's the orientation and career development course, which is just 50 minutes a week. Okay, so that 15 week, 50 minutes. And that was what we inherited from the pioneers of, of of those counselors who started back in the 1970s, the open admissions became, you know, the, the policy of, of the day. Um, so we inherited that, we've, you know, changed it over time. But also there's another course that I teach, and that is the new one, that's the first year seminar, which was, I was part of the development of the first year seminar, which is two hours with one degree credit. Okay, so now we have two courses at, at BCC. Um, one of them offers credit, the other one is the older one that doesn't offer any credit. And as you can imagine which one students are gonna go to, um, obviously they're gonna want credit if they can go at all. So, you know, I catch them there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it's, 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 it's better for us because we have more time. Um, it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. I don't want to get into that too much, but basically I developed this, uh, this Blackboard site. And so here you, know, you have articles that, uh, that we have them read. Um, and you know, we have uh, the syllabus for the course. Um, we have the chapter readings, which you put online. Um, you know, for the longest time we've had a textbook, and I've always felt that you know we should start to put things online. Um, this affords you know uh, students to uh, you know not have to deal with having to you know the bookstore and having to purchase. And some students often tell us, "Well, I can't afford." Uh, so, um, or you know, the books are getting in late and so on. So this this this. Uh, uh, avoids all of that uh, from happening, any kind of delay, so they can start reading right away. So uh, these are the text book assignments, rather the reading assignments. Um, and then I've also put uh, my PowerPoints here, every single chapter, and then some, I've also devised PowerPoints on them. So I have PowerPoints uh, on every different, every, every single topic. Um, and I've also developed a, a glossary. 
So a glossary of terms that they need to familiarize themselves with. Um, my next task is to kind of break it down, glossary by chapter. Okay, so it's not all doubled up, but rather it's broken up into uh, manageable pieces that they didn't know. And I think, you know, I always explain to them that language is very important. The language is associated with the culture. The culture of college is different from the culture that they're accustomed to being in, where, for example, time is critical, all right, so that, you know, you do have, you know, responsibilities associated with time, and that means setting priorities and so on and so forth. So it's a shift from where they're used to being you know, what I find, for example, just as a footnote, that the foreign students understand and are more prepared for college than the students who are the homegrown students, those that I see who are coming from the Bronx, who are raised in the Bronx. I find that many of them, for some reason or another, for a variety of different reasons, uh, they don't have the same appreciation for time and, 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 and the, 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 the deadlines that are associated with uh, college life and so on. Um, students who come from foreign countries, you know, they, they get it. I mean, they, 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 they tend to understand immediately that this is, you know, when this is due, it is due. And I try to impress upon students that, uh, that it is a different culture that uh, they have to get acclimated to. Um, which is a culture, by the way, I try to explain to them also, that it's a culture that prepares you for the professional world. All right, so there's no sense in saying, you can't say, well, I didn't get that email. No, you should have gotten your email. You should have been checking out your email accounts and so on and so forth. You should have responded. That's the professional world. So this is the preparation for that. Um, I also include videos and audios. Uh, which I, some of them I show in class. Uh, some of them uh, having to do with a variety of different topics uh, related to motivation, related to, uh, you know, I, I, I developed the, the open admissions. I also share the open admissions. I have a PowerPoint that I do with them on open admissions so that they understand the sacrifices that went into opening the institution to the vast majority. Um, and so, and I, and I try to incorporate a different kinds of videos and including some lessons in there. Some are related to psychology. By the way, I have a master's degree in psychology. I have a license in social work. So I am interested in always combining, you know, those aspects and features into the course. Um, and so, those are the videos. Um, now I'll, I'll turn to uh, my, my presentation, which is on the last one. Actually, it's here. Uh, and it's a paper that I've been working on. Um, and this is one of the assessments, one of the assessment instruments that I use. I also use the Myers Briggs um, and um, the Noel Levitz. Um, so I use Focus 2, for those of you who are familiar with Focus 2, which used to be uh, the COPS, uh, which is, again, it is um, a, um, another assessment instrument that is related more to career and career development. Um, which is the title of our course, Orientation and Career Development, which is OCD, which is something we're trying to change because the acronym is something that is associated, as we know, with obsessive compulsive disorder. And we don't want, you know, we've been, we inherited this, but we need to change it, uh, but we don't know if the course is going to survive, really, in light of the fact that we now have a course that offers more credit uh, at the college. So anyway, using this, uh, as a tool, as a tool uh, that I think is uh, very useful. Uh, it's an 80 item inventory. Um, and um, what they've done in, in previous uh, publications is, 
they've taken the items, there are uh, 10 distinct scales, and what they've done is they've broken them down into components, three interactive components, uh, the skill, will, and self-regulation components. And uh, students take this inventory, uh, which is both diagnostic and prescriptive. Um, they provide standardized scores, and there are national norms. Um, and it provides them for the diagnosis of their strengths and weaknesses as compared to other students. Um, and so it's useful for, two, for those two reasons. As a diagnostic tool, um, a counselor can use it uh, as, a, um, as a tool to communicate with students. And students now have information about themselves. So we could talk, we could have a conversation about what needs to develop a plan, the beginnings of development of a plan, um, to, back, to tackle their academic and their, and their personal needs. Um, over uh, 1,300 universities and colleges uh, throughout the nation have used it. It is employed as a research instrument, and I'm and at present using it as a, as a research instrument. Um, as I said earlier, diagnostic and prescriptive tools used to compare differences among students, shown to be important predictor of academic uh, performance, and used to predict and avoid dropout rates. And, and basically, retention is, is, is one of those areas that is important to be persistent. Um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, I feel as an educator uh, that it is my duty to do the very best that I can to ensure that students succeed. That's, you know, on me, I feel, as, as an educator and as a professor. What the institution, it just so happens that it complements as what the institution is looking for, but sometimes we have differences in terms of how to go about that. Um, like I said earlier, enrollment is good, uh, but we also need to focus on retention. And so we need to know what it is that we're doing from a qualitative standpoint, what's working and what's not working. Um, and so these are the measures, uh, these are the variables rather, uh, that they'll look at in the last scene. As you can see, some of them are educational, uh, academically focused. Others are more of a psychological or uh, a motivation, right? That presents a motivation. Some of them are more personal nature. Uh, so you may have anxiety that um, members like time management. Um, and so I'll step you through these. Um, And so, you know, why do we use this? Why would we be interested in using these instruments? Uh, the last seat, it says, well, it helps us to identify our degree to benefit most of the interventions, right? Uh, it provides prescriptive feedback, increases student self-awareness, which is very important. It gives them an opportunity to reflect on their needs, uh, uh, their strengths. Um, and I, I, I want to emphasize strengths, too, because it's not just about, you know, deficits. You also want to look at their strong areas. Um, and uh, in fact, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working now on uh, the analysis of uh, the strength quest. I don't know if anybody here has heard of strength quest, but that's a, a wonderful instrument. And uh, I'm looking at that now because I, I, I took it myself and I was, you know, I, I was impressed by how accurate it was. And I think that students need to hear more about their strengths as opposed to if they're constantly hearing it, especially when they get to college, you know, as soon as they get there, take the placement exams, it's about remediation, remediation, you're not ready. And I think that we need to, you know, focus more also to provide a balance uh, of what those strengths are. And so I'm looking also at another benefits for that. Anyway, prescriptive feedback increases self-awareness, focuses on thoughts, behaviors, attitudes, and belief that are linked to successful learning gives you a plan to follow to increase achievement. So, you know, the idea is that students take the assessment under the inventory um, and we discuss it 
in class, and then I meet with them individually to talk about the plan. 